Thank you very much, Mr. President. Your Excellency, Everest Ndaishimie, President of the Republic of Burundi and our host, and now Chair of COMESA. Your Excellency, Hakainde Chilema, President of Zambia, and our outgoing Chairman of COMESA, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Your Excellency, Musa Faki Mohammed, um, the Chair of the Africa Union Commission, Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, members of our private sector, allow me to congratulate COMESA, our organization, on this 30 year celebration. In 30 years, we have put together a momentous organization that has brought together 640 million people with a combined GDP of $1 trillion. And today, with a trade volume of 14 billion US dollars. Your Excellency, there is every reason for the drums of success to go up. There is every reason for us in this summit to celebrate um, 30 years of COMESA. In 30 years, Your Excellency, we have liberalized our trade. We have changed our policies. We have made it easy for goods and services to cross borders, and we have made tremendous progress. However, let me say that our trade numbers are still lagging behind. Intra-trade between COMESA countries is still around 10%. If you compare to SADC, that is 15%. And if you compare to EAC, that is almost 25%. It means there is scope for us as COMESA to do more and to do it better. And I think the responsibility for the Secretariat is cut out on what they need to do more to make sure that intra-trade between commercial countries goes up from the current 14 billion US dollars to maybe double that amount. Just for comparison, intra-trade volume between the eight ESC countries is 14 billion compared to the same 14 billion for 14 billion US dollars for 21 countries of COMESA. It means there is scope for us to cover. We've done well, but we can do better. Your Excellencies, part of the challenge that we face in the intra-trade between our countries, both in COMESA and in our continent, is largely because of the limited trading products. It is therefore important for us to build capacity to enhance our productivity, especially in the target area of agriculture. Last year, we had a fertilizer summit in Kenya for purposes of seeing how we can build sufficient capacity for fertilizer production, fertilizer use, so that we can enhance our productivity and to scale our productivity from primary products to value addition so that we can have more tradable products across our borders. It is imperative on us to scale up our productivity and to scale up our value addition interventions. It is the reason why in Kenya we are building in every county agricultural aggregation and industrialization parks to make sure that we reduce on post-harvest losses, we aggregate what we produce, and we industrialize by value addition so that we can prepare our products for sale within markets in country and markets across borders 
and use the infrastructure that we have already built in COMESA, in ESC, and in SCFTA to um, enhance our trade volumes. The other issue um, that impedes the numbers for our um, uh, trade and investment and commerce is the issue of infrastructure, which my brother HH already spoke to. Whether it is infrastructure in energy, and that's why we need transmission lines across our countries. It is the reason why we must pool our energy resources. We have huge energy de deposits in Kenya, wind, solar, geothermal. We have energy resources in other parts, in Zambia, in Tanzania, in DRC, in this country, for hydro. It is the transmission lines that will make our energy reliable so that we can do more in terms of facilitating industrialization, value addition, manufacturing of the products that we produce in our countries. Infrastructure about rail and road. Today, we are in the process of concluding the first 600 kilometers in Kenya of the Lapset Corridor that will join Kenya, Sudan, South Sudan, and Ethiopia. Again, to support trade and investment. I'm happy to report that we are also concluding the next phase of the Standard Gauge Railway that will leave Naivasha in Kenya to Uganda, to DRC possibly, and eventually to connect the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic. It is our hope that we can together build these pieces of infrastructure so that we can remove the hurdles to our trade of goods that is occasioned by lack of infrastructure. Mr. Chairman, as we waited to come to this meeting, I had a conversation with the Prime Minister of Eswatini. And he told me that it took him 13 hours to come from Eswatini to Bujumbura. A journey that would otherwise take him two and a half hours. But because he had to go to all manner of capitals, he had to go to South Africa, then go to Ethiopia, then go to another place. He left home one day and arrived here a different day. We need to reduce and, and have a proper mechanism for our bilateral air service agreements to make it easier for people, business people, goods, services to move from one country to another. Let me also uh, touch on what we need to do to build the financial infrastructure to support trade across borders in our countries. We have African financial institutions, Africa Development Bank, Afriexim Bank, Trade Development uh, Bank, which is headquartered here in Burundi. We have the Africa Trade Insurance Agency. We have the Africa Finance Corporation. These are African institutions that are agile, that understand our continent very well. And as governments, as COMESA, we must deliberately support these institutions so that they can support our trade, they can support our investment, they can support our value addition because they understand us and they understand our continent. Sometimes we spend too much time chasing multilateral institutions, and we should. But we must also believe in ourselves and build our own African institutions. Because they develop financial tools that 
are sensitive to our situation, that are agile, that are responsive to uh, the situation in our continent. Let me give an example, Mr. Chairman. Today we spend $5 billion in exchange rates for goods that we sell to other parts of the world. $5 billion. Our free exim bank has developed a financial tool using uh, no, known as the Pan-African Payment and Settlement System. This Pan-African Payment and Settlement System will allow us as Africans be able to trade for goods and services in our own currencies. It is no longer possible for us to change into other currencies to be able to trade in Africa. 16 countries have already signed in. I want to ask those of us in Comesa for us to be able to trade faster, easier, let our central banks join the Pan-African payment system so that payment and settlement system so that our traders, our business people, we can assist them to be efficient in trade. Instead of chasing currencies, they should be chasing products and making sure that they facilitate trade across our borders. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, in concluding, let me say a very significant development happened on the 25th of July this year because the TFTA came into force that brings together COMESA, EAC, and SADC. Now we have a bigger trading block that brings together 800 million people with a GDP of $1.8 trillion and it gives us an opportunity to create a bigger space for our business people to trade, to invest, and to do commerce across our borders. I must congratulate Madagascar for ratifying the ACFTA. It brings us into a space where Africa today begins the journey to trade with itself in a meaningful way. It is not possible, Mr. Chairman, to speak about COMESA without speaking about Africa Union because we are one and the same thing. And I'm happy that Musa Faki Mohammed is here. For us to think about Agenda 2063 of the Africa Union, we must also think about how do we reform our organization, the Africa Union. In the last summit, you as heads of state gave me the mandate to work on reforming the institutions of the Africa Union. We've made progress. We've had several meetings with um, the AU Commission. And our intention, and we will be presenting a report to the heads of state in February on our proposals of how do we make the Africa Union Commission a fit for purpose organization one that will speak for us as Africa, the 1.4 billion people, in an effective, efficient, forthright manner. Our proposal includes making the Africa Union Commission count. We have a robust, huge bureaucracy. We must give it some power for it to make decisions on our behalf. We must make the organization fit for purpose. Mr. Chairman, I know you have attended the Africa Union meetings. Africa Union must stop being an organization that makes decisions at night. Because as you know, we burden our bureaucrats. We burden junior people 
to sit across the night for them to make decisions at 4 a.m. and 3 a.m. and 2 a.m. when us as heads of state have left. I mean, a decision where the real decision makers don't make the decisions. Instead, they leave it to their juniors. Is an organization that will not succeed. We must change the Africa Union so that it does business on behalf of the 1.4 billion people in our continent. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, it doesn't make sense that we have an organization that starts a meeting at 8 in the morning one day, a meeting that ends 8 in the morning the next day, across the night. And the most important decisions are left to technocrats at 2 a.m. in the morning. I mean, surely. Number two, an organization that is not accountable is an organization that has the chance to fail. Africa Union, there is a complete disconnect between the Africa Union, Pan African Parliament, which is supposed to be the people's representative to hold the Africa Union Commission to account. But the Commission reports to nobody. Parliament sits in South Africa, they never attend any meeting, and it is completely disconnected. I had a chance, Mr. Chairman, allow me, to meet with the Speaker of the Pan-African Parliament 10 days ago. And we have agreed on what kind of reform do we need to carry out in the Pan-African Parliament. Today we have five representatives from every country. We believe that that number is too big. We need to reduce that number to between uh, two and three. And we need to make the Pan-African Parliament a full-time organization to hold us to hold the Commission to account and to make sure that that organization is functional. And finally, Mr. Chairman, and I've taken more time, is also to have the ratification of the Africa Court of Justice so that Africans don't have to be carried to The Hague and other places whenever there are issues in our continent that we can actually sort out our own issues as a continent whenever there are issues. That we can also sort out our trade conflicts. And I'm very happy, Mr. Chairman, that finally the UN, because the, the final thing I want to say is apart from sorting out our organization, we need to silence the guns that we have always said that we should in our continent. There is still too much conflict, too much instability, too much war all over our continent. It is not possible for us to trade. It discourages investment if we don't have peace, stability, and security in our continent. I am very happy that the UN has now passed a resolution last December that going forward, the Africa Union Peace and Security Council, the AU fund, will now be funded by assessed contributions of all UN countries so that we can better support countries that have challenges of insecurity, of war, and conflict. It is imperative that we secure our continent because it's the only way our business people can do trade. It's the only way investors, African or foreign, can invest in our continent. Again, Mr. Chairman, let me say I'm truly grateful. And allow me to say that um, because my brother Rajalina here has challenged me, that uh, I am requesting for your support for the former Prime Minister of Kenya, Raila Odinga, who was also a former AU infrastructure envoy, and he did a wonderful job. As he campaigns to be the next chairman of the Africa Union Commission, 
I have asked for your support. I will continue to ask for your support. And I'm sure we all believe that uh, in, the, in competition, and we say may the best man or woman win. Thank you very much.